Wakology Hour Interviews. Well, well, welcome to Rockology Hour Interviews. I'm your host, Jake Story, your resident rock on sir. And you usually find me at Riverside Radio on Thursday nights, giving you an hour of the best alternative music in the business with interviews, live performances, uh, rock music news, all that kind of stuff. Well, this week I have a very special episode just for you as I sat down with the front man, of Skin Dread. The man is Benji Webb. And we had a fantastic chat. We talked about how Skin Dread came together, how he got into alternative music, the birth of the new port helicopter, going on to Conan O'Brien. And then, of course, he takes on the Mammoth Challenge, the liveliest rock karaoke quiz involving Scott Stapp impersonations on the airways. You love it. You know it. Stappioki. Oh, yeah. He has a crack. Old Benji does. Um, So, yeah, sit back, pour a nice cold one or whatever you like to drink. Put your feet up and enjoy my fantastic chat with Benji Webb. from. What's up, everybody? I am joined on the Skype machine by one of the best frontmans in the business, Benji Webb from Skindred. How are you doing, sir? I'm all right, you know, brother. I'm okay. I'm cool. Yeah, you're finding this whole kind of lockdown life. You're kind of used to it now. You, how you no, it? I, 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 what I find is I go up and down. Like mm. I'm like really good for one day, and the next day I'm like, oh my god, and then I'm okay again. It's a real roller coaster ride for me. Mm, yeah, it, I, I, I kind of, yeah, I feel the same way. It's kind of, I'm in a kind of lucky position that I'm still kind of in full time work, but it's a bit strange not kind of having like the weekend to go out and kind of. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, team, if you know. Um, yeah, but. It, I noticed on your Instagram, I'm doing some Instagram stalking of you earlier. You you do a lot of running, or is it cycling? You kind of I, doing a I, lot of fitness. I, yeah, I tried to do um, well, like six days a week. I tried to make sure I go on. I've, I do a bike ride or I do a run. I was going to the gym quite a lot, but obviously the gym's all shut down. So I started taking up the bike riding. So I tried to do an hour a day on my bike, and if I don't do my bike, then I do a run. You know, yeah. try to try to keep the fat off. I, yeah, and also I think it's really. I I find it's really good for you, kind of your mental health. You feel really good about yourself after. Uh, workout kind of the endorphins are rushing and i think that's kind of uh, this kind of quarantine life i think it really helps it does uh, help a lot it does yeah. help a lot well, how, how long have you been doing it? it's been for quite a while is it a recent I, well i started i started going to the gym last january properly i've always been a member of a gym but i normally go like four times a year but um <laughs> i got i put on about four stone and i wasn't feeling good about myself and then my son said you know you look really terrible dad you look really fat you know and i <laughs> and i said out. Yeah, he called me right out. Called me right out, and I'm. Um, I told. I told him like he's full of shit. And but I did realize how bad how bad it was getting. And um, I just said to him, okay, I give, give me give me. He said to me, give me a few months of your life. I'll tell you what to eat, tell you what to train, and see how you feel after that. Mm. And I did that for about three months. Lost about four stone. Wow. And I felt and I felt fantastic. So mm. I just kept it up. I just kept it up. Yeah, that's that's really impressive. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And six days a week. That's that's a quite the vast improvement for four times a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I tell you what, if I don't do it, I don't feel like I've done anything. You know, because you you're sitting mm. around all day. I mean, you can't mix with anybody. I don't go anywhere except to the shop to get you know food once a mm. week. You know, so I I find it I find going on my bike and training a real outlet. You know, real outlet, mm. especially in this time. Yeah, with kind of the almost like the whole world being put on pause for a bit, has it given you a chance to kind of reflect on your kind of your career uh, with Skin Dread and Dub War and like back in the day? Like yeah, do, is, you it, know is it a nice I mean, pause for reflection? I, I, well, one thing I must say, I actually realized how much I do enjoy performing. You know, that's mm. it's made me realize that because I think what happens is you get, um, complacent with traveling and like, you know, oh, we got another flight or we're flying to New York tomorrow to play a show. Then we got to go to Australia. Oh, it's so terrible. Now I'm going, oh my God, how lucky was I? How fortunate was I? You know what I mean? To, to have to be in that position, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I look back now and I go, if God willing, it all comes back normal, you know, yeah. I think I'm going to have a lot more gratitude towards my position. Yeah, be really fired up for those those first shows after this this whole thing's over. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a quite interested in how you kind of, uh, kind of like reading up about you. You kind of were in that kind of the really into punk music when you were a kid. How did you get into the kind of the the, the metal side of things? Well, Who I kind was. Of you to it? I was. I've always been trying to do it. I mean, the only thing I only thing I could do in school was make everybody laugh. 
and make everybody sing. That's, that's That was the best thing I could do at school. Mm. And um, I thought when I left school, I thought, what, what am I going to do? And I felt, I didn't feel like the entertainment world was calling me, but I just felt like no matter where I was, you know, I was the front man. You know what mm. I mean? If I, if I was in the pub with my mates, I was the front man, you know? And the whole punk rock thing, when I was a kid growing up in South Wales, my, my mother and father was really into like um, R&B and James Brown and Curtis mm. Mayfield. Yeah. And then my brothers brought all the Rasta stuff into the house. But mm. then at the same time, we had all the, the Clash of Sex Pistols. All this stuff was coming at me as well. And I was I was just blown away. But when I seen the specials and I seen these black kids and these white kids in a band and they all looked like they could, they could come from my council estate, mm. I was I felt like that's what I want to do. I want to do something which merges my worlds together. Because, you know, even though I'm a black guy, I still love like David Bowie. I still love T-Rex. I still love Prince. Yeah. You know, and um, I just wanted to do something. I wanted to do something like that. Um, so anyway, I did a few different projects. And I did a project with a friend of mine. And the guys who, who became Dub War later on heard the demos that I did. Mm. And they invited me down to their rehearsal space to, you know, to have a jam. And I went down to have a jam. And at that stage, I was sick to death because I was singing on a, a lot of reggae sound systems up mm. and down the southwest of England. And... Yeah. Um, I just I was just sick of it because I was recording stuff and doing stuff with the reggae thing and it was just it was happening it was really good but I just didn't feel fulfilled. Mm. So the one day um, I went to the rehearsal with the guys who wasn't called Dub War then, and I just wanted to sing rock music, you know. <laughs> and yeah. um, I, I, we they they came up with a with a piece of music and Ginge the drummer said to me, you know, do the reggae stuff on top of this and I said, nah man, I, I don't want to do that. I want I want to just sing straight. He said, dude, just try doing some reggae stuff on top of this punk. Mm. And I did, and it was like that moment, that Charlie Chaplin moment when he found his moustache in his hat, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, that, yeah. it, just, it just seemed to work. And it was funny because I was trying to get record labels interested for a long time before that. And as soon as I did that, we had like six or seven labels come down from London to Wales to see us, mm. you know, within, within like a month of, of, of um, do, starting Dub War, you know? And um, I, I guess that's where it happened, really. And I just embraced it. The whole rock thing, I wasn't really sure because I, I I looked at Dub War as more of an alternative band, even though we were quite heavy. But when we signed the Earache, that's when we went on tour with bands like Biohazard, mm. um, Snot, System of a Down. So they started to um, influence what we were doing. So mm. we got more and more, more and more rocky, you know, more and more heavy. Um, yeah. I guess that's where we were, you know, that's that's where it came from. Yeah, I I, I watched last night. Uh, the, the documentary Rue Boys uh, for Life. The, mm-hmm. Did you do who, who did you guys put that together? Because it was a really honest kind of take on your career, which I really enjoyed. Or did you have like a kind of a company come in and kind of film? No, no, no. Uh, we had a DJ for about three years. We had a DJ because we were doing mm. a lot more samples and beats and jungle beats. So we had a DJ who joined us, um, um, Sturgis, um, Dan Sturgis. And um, he started documenting all this stuff and he got his, he started just making little videos and um we all had different you know loads and loads of, of clips and videos from over mm. the years so we give it all to dan and dan just put it all together and because he was in the band mm. he made it more real than like most than it would have been just a company doing it yeah it was it was awesome it was kind of uh almost like a warts and all documentary with you guys in the studio kind of sometimes it wouldn't all go smoothly and stuff like that it <laughs> yeah, was like yeah. really really good insight to like kind of what it's like to be like a, a band of your caliber working to put an album together. So I really enjoyed it. So I wasn't That's sure true. if you guys put it, put it together or if it was another No, company. we actually just let Dan do his thing. You know, we just, give yeah. him, he, he said to us, like, if you've got any, um, any clips or old clips of the, of, mm-hmm. of, um, you guys around, give them to me. And he put it together. And as you see it, that's how it is like, you know, and I think because Dan knew the truth of the band, he could put it together very truthfully. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's really, really good. I urge everyone to, to go watch it. I haven't, I haven't watched it. I've watched about, 10 minutes of it, I can't watch no more. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's really good. It's got a, a nice kind of full circle. A lot of this stuff, especially at the beginning of your career, when you're kind of touring America and you're, you're playing the Conan O'Brien show and stuff like that. That was yeah, we, how, what, what was that like? Well, you know, playing Conan O'Brien, because we're not from there, it didn't mean as much. Like, if you said to me next week we're playing Jonathan Ross, it'd, yeah. mean, it'd mean so much to me, like, you know. But yeah. playing Conan O'Brien was like, I don't know, playing Georgie Smith. I, I never knew that. <laughs> But we got to New York and we played the show and it was very, it was really good. It was a very good experience. I met, I met um, Billy Connolly that night and also Kevin oh, Spacey was on there. You know, oh wow! 
you know, I never said spoke much to Kevin Spacey, but you know, <laughs> there was there was a bit in the documentary. Uh, I can't remember who it was. I think it was. Um, I think it was one of your crew who said they just went to the loo and had a piss next to Kevin Spacey and like was kind of excited about it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would be excited about that today. But uh... <laughs> not today, not, not today, <laughs> not today. Yeah. Um, so what's, I don't know, there's a lot of kind of like younger up and coming bands listen to this show. What would you say is the kind of the, the secret to your success and kind of staying together in the same band with kind of the same members, kind of like 20 plus years, I want to say? Yes, 20 years. Um, Mike, Dan, Myself and, and, and Aria, we've been, been in this band 20 years. And mm. I don't know, man, I think you've just got to be stupid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> got to be stupid. <laughs> but I think what it is, I mean, I look to the left of me and to the right and behind me, and I see three musicians that I think are absolutely amazing every night. And I'm very fortunate to be on stage with them three guys. Mm. And it's never changed. Yeah. Um, and I think if you're going to have a long career with people around you, I think you've got to really... You gotta love them as human beings, and you gotta love what they do. And and I I guess that's that's been the magic for us. We, you know, we actually do love what we all do, and you know, we might not always tell each other, mm. but the, the the mutual respect is definitely there. So I think you've gotta have a mutual respect to continue um, in in being in a band with the same people. You know, I love jamming with other people, mm. but funnily enough, you know what? No matter who it is, um, I don't want to mention no names, but no matter who it is. I still want to be in the, with them three guys. It's crazy. Wow, that's that's really cool. Um, how did the uh, for your live shows, you, you guys are kind of known for like the really high energy, uh, kind of bringing everyone together, and the Newport helicopter. Who came up with the Newport helicopter? And um, uh, and sorry for listeners who aren't aware of what the New Newport <laughs> helicopter is. It's when everyone kind of takes off their top and like kind of swings it frantically, <laughs> yeah. like a propeller above their head. That's right. Uh, and it uh, looks incredible. It does look incredible. Well, the smaller the bar, sometimes it's like, you know, it looks like the Newport washing line, you know? Um, <laughs> but when you get a big festival, like with, with 60,000 people and they all take off their shirt and swing it around, it's quite epic. Well, basically what it was, we were going on stage at one of them bigger festivals and a lot of people were doing the Wall of Death and we were doing it as well. Mm. And uh, if you know what the Wall of Death is, basically it's when, when the singer tells everybody to go to the left and to the right and jump and, and run into each other. Uh, mm. And we were asked not to do that anymore. And I remember watching an old hip hop video where I can't remember who it was. Uh, the, the, the singer said, um, well, on the song, it said, um, North Carolina, come on and raise up, take your shirts off and swing them around your head like a helicopter. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and get the crowd to all take mm. off their shirts and hold them above their head. And the reason why it's called the Newport helicopter is because a few years before, I was on stage at Download and I said, let me hear it from the English. And they screamed, let me hear it from the Scottish. And they screamed. Let me hear it from the Irish. And they screamed, and I totally forgot about the Welsh. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, can you imagine? So I, I, was in the pub, I was in the pub a couple of weeks later, and my friend said to me, your name's mud, mate, your name's mud. You totally <laughs> forgot about the Welsh. I said, you know what? When you're up on stage doing what you do, you do forget, you know, you trail a fork quite often, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so I said, I'm going to put this right. And what, I made up the name the Newport Helicopter in download there and then. Mm. You know, we're going to do the Newport Helicopter. And... From that, 11 years have passed, and I don't think there's many shows that we've played and we haven't done it. And um, people talk about it all the time. And I think some people just come to the show to see that, you know? Yeah. So you redeemed yourself to all the Welshies that yeah, you named, yeah, named the helicopter yeah. after after Newport. After Newport. Salute the port. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I, I pulled it back there. And, um, you know, 11 years later, we're still doing it. And mm. we've got T-shirts and people talk about Skindred. And, and people actually say, oh, the Newport helicopter band. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is that the um, band that you put helicopter? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's, uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. I urge everyone to go check out on YouTube if they've not seen it before. Um, yeah, definitely. What, um, what kind of bands or kind of tracks you're, you're, are in your quarantine playlist? What are you listening to to pass the time at the moment? You know, I um, I listen to a lot of um, older, I like a lot of older reggae. There's a singer called Barrington Levi. Yes. Yeah, um, I think Barrington Levi is one of the best reggae vocalists ever. Um, I listen to a, I listen to a lot of Michael Jackson. I do actually listen to a lot of Michael Jackson. Um, I listen to Frank Sinatra. You know, I, I what I find myself is is trying to because I don't feel so inspired by younger up and coming artists. Mm -hmm. I, I I sort of go back to the classics. You know, I, I find myself watching Liberace because his in, in, his interaction with the audience is 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 unreal. Mm -hmm. You know, and I. That's what I go for. I listen to all this stuff. You know, I do love Diane Twid. You ever Diane Twid? 
Uh, no, I, I, I'm, they're I'm from familiar. South Africa. I think uh, apart from them, they're the last band that just blew my mind away. I think Diane Twerp are well worth watching and well worth checking out. Very different, very weird, very mm. creative. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned uh, Michael Jackson there. Uh, your kind of fashion sense kind of got that kind of colorful, like leather jackets. What, was that kind of an inspiration for you? Like, you kind of, well, I guess, your fashion sense or the way you present yourself on. on I, I, I personally believe that me as a front man, I want to be louder than life. I mean, if the Pope walks mm. in a room, you know he's in the room. You know, <laughs> Michael Jackson walks in, you know he's there. Elvis Presley, all the great names, Freddie Mercury. Yeah. They're larger than life. Mick Jagger, larger than life. And when I used to sit, go on stage in a, in a black t-shirt and a black pair of jeans it wasn't really what i wanted to do i wanted to step up my game mm. i know you know me and the boys in the band had a lot of fights about my outrageous costumes but <laughs> i you know i just said look guys i gotta be myself and i yeah. think it works i think it works we stand out as a band mm. you know so my inspiration is definitely the more little richard larger than life you know mm. that kind of uh, how do you come up with the uh the spiky uh, sunglasses because they're quite iconic now and yeah, I've on the I, cover of big things on the cat. Yeah, I um, I my my son said to me, Dad, you got to check these glasses. And I looked at them and I seen them. They were online and like they were like eighty pounds. And I said, Yeah, they look really good, but I'm not gonna have them for eighty quid. <laughs> so, uh, so my brother, who is techy and fucking clever, yeah, he, he basically, I said to my brother, Can you make these? He said, Of course, of course I can. So he came back with them. And from yeah. my brother made them. That was it. I said, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear them. And I wore them in a video. And from the day I put them on, everyone was like, they're badass. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who wears them. I see Benji. Someone's ripping you off. So it's good that you know. So that was the <laughs> idea from the glasses. And I did say to um, to Mikey, my guitarist, the other day. I'm, I think I'm gonna put them away. And he said, Benji, there's a lot of things you should put away, but the spiky glasses is not one of them. So <laughs> I think they'll be around for a while. Yeah, well, it kind of reminded me, I don't know if you're a wrestling fan, I used to watch it back in the day, the Road Warriors, they came out with those kind of shoulder pads with the spikes. You yeah. kind of got the sunglasses version yeah, of that. You know, all that, you know, the wrestlers, the, all that stuff, which is larger than life. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of theater, isn't it? It's kind of, um, no, you, you know, can't take your eyes off it. Josh, it's, it's definitely is theater. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> you know, it's like when I was a kid uh, and I used to be picked for the school play, I used to love dress rehearsals. You know, I like doing the whole show over for a couple of weeks, but then the dress rehearsals you put when you put the clothes on, it's like Superman putting on, taking off his glasses and putting on the cape. Yeah, it, something something special happens. You know, I mean, I can sing the same way I could in anything, but it's just something special happens to me personally when when I put that stuff on. You know, mm. it just it just steps my game up. Yeah, well, going back to the wrestler analogy, there's a lot of wrestlers who kind of like wear like a luchador mask, and as soon as they put it on, they become the character. That's they it. Go out and perform. That's, so it that, sounds that very similar. It. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But the trouble is, I wear my spiky glass. I wear them spiky glasses to Asda when I'm shopping. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I find myself now. It's funny because since we've been on lockdown, I find myself walking around the house in in, in stage clothes mm. a lot. You know, my <laughs> girlfriend said, "How many times are you going to change today?" She said, "Well, I feel like this today." You know. <laughs> I got some funny looks at co-op the other day because uh, we had a Joe Exotic kind of themed Tiger King party and I kind of had the handlebar moustache and then I had loads of fake tattoos like on my neck and <laughs> that kind of stuff. And then I, the stuff didn't come off and then I walked into co-op the next day and people would not stop staring at me. Uh, and well, I I say, look, well, if you're walking around looking like Joe Exotic, I don't expect... <laughs> but the only thing, don't take the guns. That's all I'm trying to say. Oh, don't, yeah. Leave I, the guns at home. Absolutely. I, so, Benji, are you up for playing my Stapioki quiz karaoke, you the liveliest do. game on the radio airwaves? Let's do it, brother. Let's do it. <laughs> well, I just heard the news today. It's time for us to play Stapioki. Okay, so I guess listeners, Rock College Hour listeners are familiar with this by now, but if you're not... I will sing lyrics to Benji in the voice of Scott Stapp from Creed. Benji then has to guess the next line, the band and the track. There's 10 tracks, 20 points up for grabs. Uh, I think the top of the heap is 18 points with Milk Teeth and Take Flight. And then well, I've lost the bloody charts now. Uh, I think Jamie Lenman had 15 and a half. Frank Turner had 15. Raul Reynolds was bottom. I guess you want to beat Raul Reynolds. He had 10 and a half. Okay. Uh, so I guess that that's the minimum, but then I guess you want to hit 18 to, to come top. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, you might be familiar with this first one. <clears throat> me, sorry, my little warm up. Me, 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 my sacrifice. Is that sounding good to you, Benji? Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> sounds fantastic. I like the tones. Okay. I like the tones. Oh, but... <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, some things are bigger than me. Uh, that's that's a that's, <laughs> that's, that, that, that's skin dread. Yes, it is a softball. Uh, uh, Yes, um, some things are bigger than me. Yeah, yeah. Goes back to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one. I got one anyway. And then what was the next little bit after? Yeah. Oh come on now! You know you got me on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I can't remember. I'll be honest. I can't oh, I, okay, technically you are right because the next word is yeah. I knew, um, yeah, they're gonna be. But, yeah, but the next little phrase is I can't trust myself. I can't trust, trust myself. myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. You're you're not the first uh, competitor on Staffioki to get stumbled by their own lyrics, and you won't Bro, be the I, last. Listen, I, I've been making them lyrics up every night <laughs> for the last ten years. Believe. People say to me, "You say you sang the wrong words." I said there was never no right words. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Oh, we'll give you two. We'll give you two. Okay. Thank you. A lot of these bands have done, done in twos and threes. So it's much more uh, more difficult if you're doing it on your own. Okay, number two. I am an antichrist. I am an anarchist. I know what I want and I know how to get it. I yes. want to destroy. Passes by. That's anarchy in the UK, Sex Pistols. Yes. Are you a Glenn oh Matlock guy or a Sid Vicious guy? You know what? The two of them done a great job. Salute yeah. the both of them. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Benji, full marks so far. Thank you. Love it. Okay, number three. I don't feel you trust in my self-righteous suicide. Well, I know it's System of a Down. I know it's self-righteous suicide. Mm. But though it's it's because you're singing it so Vic <laughs> Reeves, you know, I'm, 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 I'm missing the next part. Because you're really going, my self-righteous suicide. <laughs> I, I, so I know a system and I know the track, but I can't tell you the next line because of the way you're singing it. Okay. Uh, so, so Scott so Stapp could, is uh, <laughs> too yeah. much mustard on Scott Stapp. Too much mustard. Let's take it down to text. Okay. Uh, do, you want, do you want me to do it again in a yeah, less Scott Stapp vocal? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. Then. I don't think you trust in my self righteous suicide. And it just won't come to me, but I know uh, it will. Fair uh, enough. Oh, you get one point for sitting okay. me down. Yeah, Did yeah. you get the track? So I may yeah, I, I know a track. self righteous Suicide. Is that the name of the track? <laughs> Unfortunately if not, not. If it's not called that, it should be anyway. It should be. It is yeah. a Chinese meal, if that helps. It's a Chen... It's a Chen uh, do you know what I was going to say then? I was going to say it's a Chen Ho, but that's the Chinese restaurant down the end of my street. No. <laughs> it's Chop Suey. Yes, there we go. Awesome. Not Chen Ho, it's Chop Suey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's one point. So five out of six. That's a fairly solid start. Okay. Number four. There's no money. There's no possession. Only there... obsession. Do you know what I really get off your voice? I get like this really cool vibe, but I don't get the song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I... you're enjoying it. That's Hang on a minute. Cute. I've, I've toured with this band. I got the guy's number in my phone. Oh, da, yeah. Da, 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 you you collab with him. He sang on Warning. Warning. Yeah. He sang on Warning. Yeah. That, that is, is Papa Roach. Yes. And it's, uh, I can't remember any of the songs again. I think it's their, uh, well, if, of their older stuff. I would say it's their second biggest resort, song. It? It's the other one. The other kind of one which was did very well. I can hear it. I can hear it in my head, but I just can't remember. <laughs> any of it. The possession. I can't remember. I know uh, it's Papa Roach. Papa, you get half a half a point for Papa Roach. Uh, okay. The track was Between Angels and Insects. Well, I would never have got that. I would, because you know what? I know a lot of songs. Some songs are mine. I don't even know what they're called when I'm on stage. <laughs> so this is going to be great. You're not even but the first. Uh, at least I'm getting the artist. At least I'm yeah. getting the artist. Yeah, that's the main thing. Uh, Jacoby, we apologize if you, you're listening. Okay, um, number five. Uh, well, let me just try and remember. Those who die are justified for wearing the badge. And the chosen what? Yeah, that yeah, that's that's almost it, I think. Well, it sounds like the chosen what to me. Oh, uh, the song. The song is not called the but you got I, the lyric right. Yeah, the lyric, that's the I can't lyric. remember the name of the song and I won't, but it's <laughs> we'll call it the chosen what and it's Rage Against the Machine. Oh, there you go. Okay, yes, so I can give you one point there because you got I'll take, I'll take one. I'll take one because like I said, you're singing it in such an original manner that it just blows yeah. me away and I can't think of the next line. That's what it is. Well, you got the you got the next line. You got the chosen and then chosen there's one. Oh, 
Can't, almost yeah. what? It's all right. We'll give it to you. We'll give I you one and a half there because you got the line kind of, and then you got yeah. Yeah. the band. Yeah. So one and a half. There we go. Okay. Number six, Benji. Here we go. Yeah. I've got a good feeling about this one. Something takes upon me. Yes, there you go. Um, corn. Yep. Something takes a part of me. Ooh, uh, not quite. quite. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, do you so keep a dog on? A dog, freak on a leash, bro. There you go. Freak, <laughs> on, a, freak <laughs> on a leash. There that is freak on a leash. Something takes a part of me. Yeah, man. Yeah, yes. Jonathan, he's a good guy. Awesome. Yeah, no, he's a top lad. Um, okay. What are we on there? Two, four, uh, five, right. six and a half, mm-hmm. seven and a half. Not bad. Pretty solid. Uh, four to go. Okay. Okay. Number seven. Uh, work for my dirty yo. Work for my dirty yo. Not a clue, mate. Oh. Not a clue. Uh, Sorry. Okay. okay. Work for my daddy yo. Work for my daddy yo. No. Go. No, ch- no chance. Okay, uh, it was uh, Finn Lizzy whiskey in a jar. Okay, okay, that's and why whiskey in the jar. You know whiskey. You know I, a uh, Finn Lizzy fan? I, listen, I love Finn Lizzy, but I just never recognised the song in the way you presented it. I'm a, I mean, <laughs> Scott Stapp's really messing with your your yeah, your musical Scott, memory here. Scott's killing me. <laughs> okay, I'm confident you're going to get the next one because right. I know you're a big fan. Okay, number eight. Stop your messing around. Better think of your future. Yes, there you go. Message to you, Rudy. Special. Yes, yes, that was smash. That was a nice, yeah. easy one. Yeah, yeah. because you, do you know what it is, mate? You sang it right. <laughs> Once you put the Vic Reeves, I'm lost. Oh no. Uh, um, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get that because, because you went stop your messing around. That yeah. works, see. And the others, you went like, chop your messing around. And it's so like, if, no. if I took up Scott Stapp seriously and went yeah. to the clubs, then um, it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't take off. People would laugh me out of the building. Yeah, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> I, I always say this. As long as they remember you, let them laugh. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, two to go. Uh, confident you get this one as well. The Sharif don't like care. Well, the Casbah. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And the The song band. is The Clash and mm-hmm. the song is called Rock the Casbah. Okay, very good. And did okay. you know, did yeah. you know when they were writing Rock the Casbah, they wasn't very friendly. None of them was turning up to the studio. Mm. And the drummer, by all accounts, wrote most of that song without them. And then didn't he get booted out the band and then he heard oh, I don't know. the song I he wrote he on in, the I, Yeah, I think he got into drugs and all that, you know, yeah. crap. But um, he that... definitely was in the studio on his own in New York, and he started that song off, which is a great song. It's one of my favorite Clash songs. The one thing I love about the Clash is that they don't do the same thing twice. They no. they hit you up with anything they want, which I love mm. in me. I love people who do that, you know? Yeah. The only person I don't want to do that is ACDC. I just don't want to hear a reggae version of ACDC. <laughs> um, have you seen the uh, was it the Strummerville guys who made a, a the Clash kind of film? Uh if you're a Clash fan, I really recommend yeah. you go watch it. I think it's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, um, I think I think I've seen most of the Clash stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, I, it's, it's a great film. I recommend you go check it out if you're not. Yeah, man. I've seen it. Okay. Um, last one. Okay. Let me just check the score one sec. So five, six and a half. Uh, sure. This is great radio, Jake. Eight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're on twelve points. One to go. Mm-hmm. You get fourteen. 14 points, which is fairly solid. That's very mid table. Um, I don't mind being mid table, bro. Yeah, you, you smashed Raul Reynolds, uh, so that, that's that's already done and dusted. Jesus. Okay, number 10. Um, you want it all, but you can have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's it. That's Do you know the next little bit? Off. Yes, it is. Um, piano, fish dying on the video. Okay. <laughs> oh, I can't remember. You want it out, but you can't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I can't remember the name. If someone was in your grill, they would be in your... In your face. Yes, yes. And then, they, and then if you... <laughs> so that's <laughs> the first little bit. Just give it to me, man. Don't give it to me. <laughs> I, I, don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. That's it. Oh, Brilliant. Okay. No, no, you... you said, I, I'll take half. So I got 13 and a half in all, did I? Uh... 
the 12 and a half. So it's one point for the line and half point for the band and the track. Yeah. So 12 and a half. And I believe that puts you mid. I haven't got the table in front of me. I'll, 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 st- I'll, I'll let you know on the, uh, if you listen to the, the live show on Thursday, okay. I'll announce it then. But I believe okay, you're, you're eighth. But I'll have to... uh, you know, I'm quite happy with eighth. That's, I'm, yeah. I'll start tonight with eighth. Well, did you enjoy the step? Yoke? It, was, it, was... <laughs> it was really good. It was very good. But I think what you need to do in order to step your game up is, is find um, karaoke versions and play a piece of the music as well. Because it'll sit, I think you'll sit more in the pocket, so you don't become the the Vic Reeves sort of pub <laughs> singer. I think it becomes too easy. That's hard. the thing. I suppose you're right. As soon as yeah. you hear the, as soon as you hear the cards, you'll know it before you even start singing. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. All right, All right. stick to what you're doing, bro. You're doing it. Right. <laughs> what, what I appreciate about? the advice, to Benji. What, what do I know? Huh? What do I know? Um, so what, what's in store uh, for Skin Dread in the future? I know it's a bit difficult at the moment to kind of oh, predict, no, no, but no, what, what we've got. Fingers crossed. We got. Yeah. Um, if the world can get can stay real uh hopefully we got a we got a show which is sold nearly sold out at the roundhouse we're doing a live dvd and a live recording which we've never done before and i can't remember what date it is i think it's in october so fingers crossed that things will come normalish by then and we'll be able to do that uh me and the boys been writing some new songs mm-hmm. and i do believe no matter what by the end of this year, we're going to be in a studio recording a brand new Skin Dread album. Oh, yes. We love to hear it. That is... Uh, we've done, Skin Dread fans excited right now. It was funny because we were doing... We were doing... We were writing just before it started. So we we wrote like six bangers and it was sounding great. And then mm. obviously this hit. So we've just been doing little bits and pieces over the internet. But you know what? I could sing online and sing on my Instagram and all that. But nothing's ever going to beat singing in front of an audience. And that's... Yeah. That's where I am. It's like sometimes when we do the when I do the singy things on my Instagram and all that, I do it, but nothing beats looking in people's eyes. There's a chemistry that's made between a, you know, yourself and an audience. There mm. really is a magic that I, yeah. I don't think we'll ever get that just being on on um on the internet. We'll never get that. So fingers crossed for us to do the rock and roll thing again. Yeah, well, that's there's words from a true front man there, front man there, Benji. There's, uh, I can't wait for you to come back. I'll definitely make uh, an appearance at the Roundhouse gig, hopefully at the yeah, end man. of the year. Big and I cannot yeah. wait, cannot wait for the new record. Because yeah. Um, yeah, I love Big Tings. Big Tings did extremely well. I noticed a lot. Of the, um, that's my jam did very well. I was on kind of popping up on TV shows and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, um, so well, it was great. Yeah. So um, there's a new, there's a TV show called um, Brassic. I think they used um, Big Tings on there as well. So mm. that's really cool. I mean, it's good. I mean, I, but I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for the next phase of um, Skin Dread because it's funny because we, um, not many bands get the seven albums, you know. We got seven yeah. albums, you know what I mean? And we're right in the eighth now. Uh, yes. I think I think we're never going to be stuck for lyrics in a time like this, you know? Yeah. You yeah, know? it's kind of a very crazy world we're living in oh, right now. It just thanks. keeps... This decade keep, in particular. I, I keep thinking that I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in an episode of Black Mirror. I was literally going to say that. Yes. This, oh, this is so Black Mirror. I'm like, I keep trying to press some button on my phone. It'll take me back to like, you know, February. You know, it's incredible, <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Where can uh, the Riverside Radio audience find you on the Instagram, Benji? What's, B- your, what's your Master, handle? B Master Dread is my handle. B Master Dread. And also Dread. Skin Dread Music. Skin Dread Music and B Master Dread. That's me. We can keep up with your workouts. We can get what you're singing. We can, yeah, we can get your Benji web fix right yeah, there. Yeah, you can. Yeah, man. Awesome. I really appreciate you taking the time out today, Benji. Uh, and yeah, can't wait forward for, to new music from you guys. And yeah, been a big fan for ages. So it's a bit of a bit of a treat for you, you coming on the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Stay safe, stay in, and let's protect the NHS. Thank you, man. Absolutely. That was my chat with Benji Webb from Skin Dread. And like we said on the show, you can follow him at. Be Master Dread on the socials, and you can follow Skin Dread at Skin Dread Music. Uh, thanks for listening to the show. I've been your host, Jake Story, your resident rock on uh, Give us a follow on the on the socials at Rockology Hour uh, on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that jazz, and uh, www.rockologyhour.com as the mothership. Um, and if you enjoyed this uh, podcast, please share it with a mate uh, and subscribe. Give us a five star review, and yeah, do all that good stuff, which really helps us out be maximum appreciated over here um anyway stay safe stay sane i've been jake stora and i'll be back next week see you later rockology hour interviews